This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash company man or click the link in the description and what you get is this really cool starter kit for only $5. It's a really good deal and I'll tell you more about it at the end of the video, but for right now, CVS. When I say CVS, you picture one of these places, right? You could stop in, pick up your prescriptions, maybe buy some bandages or even a snack on your way out. Depending on your part of the country, you may be more familiar with Walgreens. On the surface, they're both really similar, but CVS is much bigger than Walgreens. Would you be surprised to hear that CVS is on the Fortune 500 list? Well, maybe not, but would you be surprised to hear that they're number 14? Come on now, that's pretty high on the list. That place where you go to get your prescriptions filled and buy cold medicine is the 14th largest company in the world? $177 billion in revenue last year. Walgreens is on the list too, but they're way down here at number 37, right behind Costco. That $177 billion in revenue, by the way, is up from last year, which is up from the year before. It's gone up every year since 2010 actually almost doubling since then. They're the largest pharmacy in the United States, approaching 10,000 locations. Again, compared to Walgreens, well, it's higher. CVS started in 1963 with a single location. Now that's 55 years ago, so over the course of 55 years, they've done a lot. Walgreens started over 100 years ago and haven't done quite as much. I'm starting to feel bad for Walgreens. They're like that older brother that's successful in his own right, but just keeps getting overshadowed by the younger one. Ah, I got it. Walgreens is Tito Jackson, or Cooper Manning, or Kevin Jonas, or is he the more famous one? I feel we're getting off track here. Let's get away from Walgreens, and let's look at that first CVS location. Do you know what CVS stands for, by the way? We see those letters all the time, and I guess we just accept it to be the name without thinking about it much. But clearly, CVS has to stand for something. It's Consumer Value Stores. And in fact, that first location didn't go by initials. It went by that full name. It was two brothers named Stanley and Sidney Goldstein, along with a third guy named Ralph Hogan. Though I get the impression that Stanley is the main person in this story. CVS was successful from the start. It went from one location to 17 locations within the span of a single year. A big part of their business strategy at that time was to value their workers, pay them more than the competitors would, provide health insurance. In the words of Stanley Goldstein, we just used common sense in the way we treated people. By the end of that decade, in 1969, the 17 locations grew to 40. That year, the original owners decided to sell CVS to a much larger company called Melville, primarily a shoe company at the time. The new ownership did a lot to expand the company. One location to 40 locations in the first seven years, that's impressive, but it still wasn't quite the 9700 location Fortune 500 company that it is today. For that, Melville is responsible. As I said, they were a much bigger company that had resources they were willing to put toward CVS. Over the next 50 years, it was just a seemingly non-stop storm of... <laughs> We'll call that an expansion period, through many acquisitions, but also by opening stores of their own. Let me go through some of these acquisitions. We left off with Melville buying CVS in 1969. From there, in 1972, they added 84 stores in New York they bought from Clinton Drug. In 1977, they added 36 stores in the New Jersey area when they bought Mac Drug. In 1990, they added 490 stores when they bought the chain called People's Drug Stores. That was in Pennsylvania and Virginia and the Maryland area. In 1996, something happened that I think perfectly expresses how big they had grown. Remember, Melville was still the owner of CVS and by this time it had acquired some other companies that you may recognize. Linens and Things, Marshall's Department Store, KB Toys. Yeah, I have a feeling this isn't the last time I'll be talking about Melville on this channel. But in 1996, CVS was by far the most successful part of their business. So much so that they decided to dump everything else and rename the whole company CVS. So now, instead of Melville owning CVS and all those others, it was now CVS that 
own CVS. It was all just CVS. In the next year, 1997, they continued their expansion with their biggest acquisition yet. They bought Revco, which was a pretty large drugstore in the Midwest. They paid $3.7 billion for it, and it added an additional 2,600 stores. The next year, they bought Arbor Drugs, which added 200 more stores in Michigan. The year after, they bought an online drugstore called Soma.com. They renamed it CVS.com. In 2004, they added another 1,260 locations from Eckerd Health Services. In 2006, they bought 700 Savon and Osco drugstores. Yeah, I know, you get it by now. They bought a bunch of drugstores. Well, let me just say two more, because they're big ones. In 2008, they bought Long's drugstores, adding 521 more pharmacies throughout the Southwest. And finally, in 2015, they acquired Target's Pharmacies. Those pharmacies inside of Target's are now owned by CVS. There's around 1,600 of them, and they're spread across almost every state. Okay, I'm done now, but also, I've only started. See, starting in 2006, they started expanding in a much different way. In addition to adding all these new locations, they started focusing on strengthening their existing locations, and really just expanding the business further in the process. Are you familiar with the Minute Clinic? It's a walk-in clinic. It's generally not as good as an actual doctor's office or hospital, but it's a place where you can see a nurse or medical medical assistant and hopefully get some of your basic symptoms diagnosed and treated. Well, CVS bought them. There's minute clinics and CVS pharmacies and targets, even ones that aren't attached to anything, and as of 2006, CVS owns all of them. And I'd say that was an acquisition that made perfect sense. One year later, in 2007, they bought what's called a pharmacy benefits manager named Caremark. And what's a pharmacy benefits manager? It's something complicated that has to do with doctors and prescriptions. According to this article from Edward Lamb from The Balance, it's an organization that provides services, educational programs, and services to aid patients. They do this through affecting the behaviors of pharmacists and doctors to prescribe drugs appropriately to maximize their effectiveness. It's some kind of a middleman? I don't know exactly, but I know it was a big deal for CVS to own one because it complemented their pharmacies. They thought it was important enough to pay $26 billion for it. In that same article, it lists CVS Caremark as being the second largest pharmacy benefits manager in the United States. In 2015, they bought Omnicare for $12.7 billion. They provide pharmacy services to long-term care facilities. The last acquisition I'm going to mention, I promise, is potentially their biggest. I say potentially because it hasn't exactly happened yet, but if it does, it's going to be big. The company I'm talking about here is Aetna, an insurance company, one of the big ones. In December of 2017, the deal was announced for $69 billion. Earlier this year, it was overwhelmingly approved by the shareholders on both sides. The only obstacle remaining is the Department of Justice. They have to determine if the acquisition violates any antitrust laws. Will it damage the competition in the healthcare industry? Basically, if it would form some kind of a monopoly. Because, as it turns out, being the largest pharmacy in the country, one of the largest pharmacy benefits managers, and one of the largest insurance companies might make them too powerful. Who would have thought that? If it does get approved, the end results are a little unclear. I've heard the term one-stop shop being used quite a bit. And this could create the potential for a combined CVS Aetna to really be a one-stop medical shop. It could potentially provide a way for people to walk into a CVS, get their diagnosis at the Minute Clinic, and walk out with the prescribed medicine that they need, effectively eliminating traditional medical offices in many instances. Consumers will be able to not have to go to the doctor as often because they can go to their local CVS. Potentially restructuring the entire healthcare system as we know it or it'll get denied, or maybe none of this would happen anyway. It's still really early on, but it could mean really big things for CVS. Have you noticed a bit of a transformation happening? CVS is transitioning from that place I described in the beginning where you pick up prescriptions and grab a snack into an all-out health organization. Minute clinics, insurance companies, the new official name of CVS is actually CVS Health. You saw it on that Fortune 500 list. 
And when I go back to that list and click on it, it says CVS Health continued its multi-year transformation from pharmacy company to healthcare company. Do you remember a few years ago, they were all over the news when they decided to stop selling cigarettes and other tobacco products in their stores? The reason they did it is because they're a health organization now. Health organizations can't be selling cigarettes. At the time, they said the cigarette sales made up about $2 billion of their sales, so it was a sacrifice. But there's other added benefits to doing it. For one, it sure made them look good. Taking such a strong stance against smoking, they even claim that the fact that they no longer sell cigarettes has led to many people quitting them altogether. Now, personally, I find that hard to believe, but they provide some stats to back up their argument. Make what you will of it. But either way, CVS is doing their part for the cause. They have become a health organization. That first CVS location didn't even have a pharmacy. A lot of the early ones didn't. It shows how unpredictable running a business can be. Do you think Stanley Goldstein in 1963 could have ever dreamed that this is what his single store would become? Let me know in the comments. Did you know any of this about CVS? Did you know they were this big? Did you know the kind of business they evolved into? Did you know what CVS stood for? In case you already forgot, it's consumer value stores. Now you don't have to scroll back and search for that part of the video. And any thoughts on whether or not their latest acquisition attempt, Aetna, will happen, and what that'll mean for CVS and the public? I'd like to hear what you have to say. I promised I'd tell you more about this starter kit. Let me tell you what you get. And remember, it's all only $5 and free shipping too. You get this executive handle, heavyweight aluminum rubber grip. You get four cartridges for it with six stainless steel blades with a special trimmer edge built in. You get a trial sized version of their shave butter, body cleanser, and one wipe Charlie's. Not bad for $5. I tried all of it and it was delightful. The razor, it just feels good when you're holding it. The shave butter smells really good and feels really good on your face. I'll make a little confession. I don't know much about shaving. I go to a place much like CVS. There's practically a whole aisle of choices. I'm overwhelmed. Oh, and you know how half the time they keep the razors behind that glass and you have to go get the guy to open it for you? And he knows no more about shaving than you do. Dollar Shave Club has all the good stuff and they're willing to send it to your door at a fraction of the price yet. If you've heard about Dollar Shave Club in the past and you've been on the fence, this is the time to get started. A $5 starter kit, free shipping, and after that, razors are just a few bucks a month. To take advantage, go to dollarshaveclub.com/companyman or click the link in the description. Thank you for watching.